Thanks for coming in and listening to this talk this afternoon. I appreciate having you all here. Um, before I get started, I just want to thank the sponsor, the Grange Research Development Corporation. Um, going with this topic, um, it was only two years ago that I applied for the scholarship and UAVs or drones were really just a military term and it was a bit of a pointy end sort of subject. It's, it's got a lot of hype around it now, but GRDC um, put the money in early on and, and uh, that was good. Also, NAPLA Australia, uh, they pull these scholarships together. They've got the network, and so thank you very much to NAPLA. Um, and I can't go on without um, thanking my family, especially my wife. Um, it's been a big couple of years, but we're sort of out the other side for the time being. So a little bit of background. Our farm, there's, we, are, we, we are blessed to farm in a district that we are surrounded by uh, really good forward-thinking farmers that, that do challenge the way we think and the way we farm. It's good to have those farmers around us and it's helped us bring our farm up to a, a level where we are. We have seen some gains from some technology that we've implemented such as the uh, two centimetre RTK, zero till farm, uh, three metre control traffic. And, and these technologies have really improved production on our farm. But more recently we've been thinking, so what's the next step? Where, where are we going to take this forward? And there was a lot of discussion about, well, the more we know, the more data we have, in season, the better decisions we can make before um, before we finish growing the crop, and, and being able to collect that data in season rather than waiting until the end of the season when we can look at the yield data. So um, it was proposed to me that um, the, the UAVs maybe have the answer to that because they're a vehicle that we can control and we can um, put it up and collect the data whenever we like. So. Basically, my study topic was the potential of UAVs and grains industry and what benefit they could bring. I do focus on the grains industry because um, UAVs are a very, they're a very uh, portable platform. They can be used in, in several different uh, industries and even within the, ag, within the ag industry, they can play very different roles in different situations. So I do focus on the grains industry. And I guess my, throughout my subject, I wanted to make sure I could get through and actually find out the actual actionable benefits from the technology, not just the ability to be able to generate maps and information, but can we make decisions with that information. So when uh, looking into, well, where, will we go, where should I go and, and who should I talk to about this technology, there were some startups starting to happen in the US and Canada, and uh, I like travelling to places where the, uh, the, there was no, no language barrier there, um, and it was really good. The information flow was excellent in, in North America. So uh, my wife and I, we travelled over to the United States and Canada and spent uh, about seven weeks over there just meeting with farmers, um, different companies um, and, and researchers and, and talking to them about the potential for UAVs and how they could be used in the grains industry and how they were using them over in the US. And what we found is a real variety of, of people that were having a go at this industry. So if you have a consider Precision Hawk there first, um, they're a company, they're only t two or three years old, but they've got money from an investor from, uh, whose name is Bob Young. Now, to most people, that man doesn't mean anything to you, but he's a, he's a man who um, started a company called Red Hat Linux, and that company, or that operating system, is actually holds up about half of the internet. So th these guys, <laughs> they've invested heavily, millions and millions of dollars in Precision Hawk, um, and their next, in their latest round of funding, they had money from Intel, now, Intel create most of the processes that go into uh, phones and computers and again significant millions of dollars into this company Precision Hawk. So these guys aren't mucking around. They see that there's growth in the industry there. So uh, even if the industry takes a while to mature, it's, it's, going, it's not going to go away quickly. Now that's right at the top end of the spectrum. Uh, the photo of me standing where there were those three guys holding that um, grey and yellow UAV. That's the extent of their company. There's three guys, young guys, I think the oldest one's about 28 years old. Um, they invited us out to, um, uh, it was in Arizona, I think, and they showed us their, their product and they were really excited about how their drone was going to, to save agriculture. So, yeah, and there's a whole bunch of different companies that, that we got to meet with and talk to. Another interesting thing was they actually had conferences over there that were just focused on farmers, UAVs and getting the manufacturers together just to talk about what they're going to use it for. So, um, you know, it's interesting to see where they're at over there with this technology. There's a lot of buzz going around it. 
So what I'll do is I'll just go through a few different examples of how they're using um, UAVs and how they propose it, to use the data to get um, good information in their systems. So um, corn, you know, it's a hill of crop in the Midwest, and the most early determinant of yield potential in corn is the plant stand. So in this uh, image here, what they're doing is they're counting plants per metre, and that gives them a decision-making tool on, well, you know your early, early stage uh, yield potential, and what do we do if we've got a low plant stand, or how, how's that going to impact our final yield? Another example which gets people excited a lot is uh, this ability to build uh, the 3D models based on areas that, um, that you map. So the basic principle is if you take a uh, photo from one angle and then you take it from another angle, you can use a, an algorithm, a stereo algorithm, to actually build a 3D model. It's, it's technology that's borrowed from other industries such as um, construction or mining, where in mining you can use it to uh, measure the, the volume of a pit, say. In this particular example, this is a uh, trial trial site, and what they're doing is they're testing for lodging. It allows them to have a, uh, a quantitative rather than a qualitative uh, lodging score. They can shoot, measure how far the crop's fallen over using this 3D model. Now, interesting story behind this image is that I went to one of these conferences I was talking about, and we had these practical sessions in the afternoon, and we were going to um, do some scouting, which is a really common common word in the US. They're going to go scout some corn. And, um, so what they did, they handed us all our iPads and said, we collected some uh, UAV data earlier today and we want you to go and find these couple of hot spots in these paddocks using the iPad. So we opened up this app and basically from the, the data which was collected by the UAV, we were able to use the um, GPS on the iPad and the compass and go and find those spots in the crop. Now what was interesting about that was the corn crop was six foot high and we could actually walk through this maze of corn and find that exact spot and I'd identify what the problem was. Um, so it was a real practical example of identifying where um, this became useful. Now when you think about um, UAVs or drones as the media often calls them, you think of high technology, you think military, but a lot of the time the, the sensor that's actually being carried in these machines is no more than a modified version of a, a compact camera that you take to a Christmas party. So it, it, it's interesting because they actually do, do work quite well, um, but there are some problems arising with the data that's coming from these, these cameras. So they're designed to, um, they often quite, they're brighter in the middle of a photo. If you were to analyze a, a photo that comes from one of these, and it, all sorts of different processing issues arise when you use a camera that wasn't designed for its original purpose. We'll have a look at a few sensors that are coming onto the market and, more slides. But firstly I'll just go a few, through a few of the overall outcomes and, and what I, a few perspectives of the industry and where I think it's at. So when I started out I, I truly expected that I'd be going to a lot more universities, a lot more um, research sites to see how they're developing the UAV technology with the, uh, with the sensors and then that sort of thing. But what I found upon starting to do my research was there were a lot of companies that already existed and there were even some farmers that already had UAVs and were using them, but a lot of them really weren't getting actionable information and making in-crop decisions with that data. A lot of them were still struggling with, the, with processing the data, with, um, with the data being useful to them and being able to pull it into their existing precision ag systems. So it's almost like they, they skipped that R&D phase and went straight to product development which I found really interesting. It's exciting for the people developing the products because they're right on the cutting edge and they get to do all these exciting things. But as far as, you know, if you go to a shop and you buy a, an iPhone or a, um, some sort of Android phone, you, you know that it's gonna work out of, out of the box. Whereas some of this um, UAV technology, there's a lot more challenges that you face when you go and buy a $40,000 drone than you, you expect when you buy it. So getting more specific into some outcomes, uh, looking at the, the platform. So it's really important if you're ever going to start to get involved in, in UAVs yourself is to realise that the, the UAV itself is just a, a vehicle that carries that sensor. And yes, it's important to have one that, that suits your application to have the right battery life and be able to fly at the right height. But really the complexity lies in the sensor. The sensors are the the most complex part, and then uh, moving on from that is the actual data that they produce and um, 
how you use that data. So, yeah, we've, the problem with, with a UAV and flying and following flight paths, that's solved. Let's focus now on the, the data, the data it collects and how we're going to use it. That problem's not solved. Um, and, and some examples of the problems that still exist are repeatability. So using these um, sensors that Ken and Ken really mentioned before, but also some of the newer ones is if you go and collect some data at, at nine o'clock in the morning, and then you go and collect data from the same paddock uh, two hours later, because the sun angle is different, because there might be a bit of cloud cover, there might be atmosphere changes, that data is not repeatable. So it doesn't line up exactly. You can do some sort of uh, calibration or, or whatnot, but that, that not being able to get repeatable data or a challenging calibration is, is something that needs to be considered. <clears throat> the spatial accuracy, so being a broadacre farm, we farm large areas, but we always know where we are with our GPS is within about uh, two to four centimetres, and we're used to that sort of data accuracy. The GPS is generally, um, on a UAV, come with a standard data accuracy of about two to three metres. So if you can identify a weed in UAV imagery, but you only know where it is within two or three metres on the ground, that's a problem. It can be solved with money, but then again, it comes back to a cost-benefit situation. Handling data processes, and that's something that because technologies uh, companies are investing a lot in these UAV companies, that problem is being solved very quickly. But the, so once you've got information in a cloud infrastructure, it's fine, it can be processed quickly and shared. But our biggest problem is getting the information up into those systems. So it's all well and good to say that the problem solved in data processing and moving it around, but it's really, really not because of local infrastructure and getting the data actually up into that. Uh, cloud to start with, and that's that's a challenge. Often it's quicker to load up a, a um, an external hard drive gigabytes of data and send it via Express Post than it is to actually upload it through your existing internet. So, in this 2015, um, let's take a step and look at some of these sensors that may be able to solve some of our re uh, repeatability issues. And these are actually designed light enough and small enough to to go in a UAV and fly, fly for an hour or so, and they're designed specifically for UAVs and detecting uh, vegetation, which is what we're interested in in broadacre farming. Um, we've got a couple that have been developed in the US, and a really exciting one that's uh, developed by an Israeli company called Sensorize, and I was lucky enough to be able to meet with one of the founders of that company while I was overseas. Um, some of the very interesting business models coming up about these sensors as well, whereas with Sensorize, they're, they're going to try and sell the sensor quite cheap and make their money out of processing the data. So my recommendations um, for the industry and for moving forward would be to make sure that, yes, we've got all these new and exciting sensors coming out, but we need to uh, rigorously evaluate how good they're actually going to be and how well we're going to be able to calibrate them. I've talked a bit about GPS. Now, a really important one is this making solid links between the people that understands, understand the UAV technology, people that understand the sensor technology, people that understand the um, agricultural science behind the plants and why they show the way they show in, in near infrared and whatever else, linking that with the agronomists, linking that with the farm. There's a lot of people involved in that process, and I think that's one of the, <coughs> the biggest challenges in, in getting this sort of technology implemented into a, a, a profitable position. And it's very important to not use UAVs just for UAVs' sake, that they're exciting new technology. We've got lots of other existing technologies out there that are able to collect data and crop that we, we mustn't discount just for the sake of the newest technology. But here's an example, an example on how our farm, we, we had a bit of a go at um, generating some data using a UAV. So this is uh, several hundred red, green, blue, so just standard photographs that were taken by UAV. They were stitched together to generate a, a mosaic of a paddock, which is about 100 hectares. And I've zoomed in on, on one area, which is right on the edge of a, uh, of a public road near our paddock. And in the last couple of years, we've had some uh, ryegrass, which is a weed to us, start to sneak in from the edge of the road. And ryegrass has a, a different spectral signature to, to wheat and to soil. It actually looks different using those three bands. So we're able to train a, a computer software program what, what does wheat look like, what does uh, soil look like, and what does ryegrass look like? And it runs over the whole uh, data set and, and tries to 
detect exactly what pixels are ryegrass and what, what pixels are everything else. And using that, we can have an exact uh, area of uh, the ryegrass infestation. We, can, we know exactly where all those infestations are. And using that data, we can then go and move forward, potentially make a chemical application map where we actually apply a higher rate of chemical where the infestations are as opposed to the rest of the paddock. And that's just one way, of, like a, an example of sort of actionable information. And keep in mind, this sort of thing costs money. Um, you're looking at maybe 10 plus dollars a hectare to get a map like that. So it doesn't come cheap. Now, this, it, this sort of thing promotes a lot of discussion, or if it doesn't, it should. Because we've got to think about um, where UAVs are a solution for a problem and where they're, sort of, when they're actually solving a problem that already exists. And this relates also to cost benefit. Now, coming from the grains industry, where we, um, sometimes margins are quite tight, and if we want to understand variability in our pegs and what's going on in season, sometimes sources such as satellite imagery or um, tractor mounted green seekers or something like that might be a, a more cheaper, might be a cheaper option than UAVs itself. It might give us better value in the long run. So that's about all I've got to talk about in UAVs at the moment. It's a really big topic and my report goes into a lot more detail about how they work, some of the different companies that are available um, to access for that sort of information. So it's been released and it's available on the NUPA website, my report, so please um, download it, have a bit of a read. Now, do it soon because in a month or so it will all be old information. So thank you very much. <laughs>